How's it going everybody? Welcome to a large family reviews and today we're making sourdough bread. Okay, so you're gonna start off with two and a, well I should say this is for a double batch. So you want two and a half cups of water. And then your bubbly starter. This is what it looks like after it's fed and it it used to be down by the one and now it's over the two. So we're gonna do what's called a floater test, which if it's, ooh, if it floats, then it's ready to go. So you're gonna want a cup of that. This is half a cup, so. Oh, there it's floating, so it's good to go. Half a cup, and then one more. It's a floater. Okay, so now that that's in there, you want to mix it up. Mama, why is there a bunch of bowls? Why is there a bunch of bowls? Because Mommy's been making extra sourdough to sell. Mm. Could you get Mommy a clean fork, Elsie? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Nice job. Okay, so you're going to mix up the starter with the water until it starts to kind of bubble. And you want it all dissolved in there. It smells yeasty. Even though there's no yeast. Well, it's wild yeast. No mm -hmm. store-bought yeast. Right. Two ingredients in this stuff, right? Yep, just flour, equal parts of flour and water. And that sea salt over there, right? Well, yeah, in the in the bread, there's also salt too, which is what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna do a tablespoon of sea salt. Mm. One, two, three teaspoons. What about the for Alphum? And then mix that up. What about for Alphum? And then. We are going to add flour. Unbleached? Unbleached. Uh, I like the unbrominated, I think it's called. It's a chemical that they put Brominated in. Brominated? Yep. Two cups. Why? The flour, are you, and when you Three. do this, it gets off, and then it looks like this, the flour you in that one. Four. Bit on your shirt. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Five, uh, yeah. Flour's messy, huh? I love the questions you ask, Elsie. It makes everything more fun. So I start out with five cups, and then I mix it in there, and then I'll add the last cup after it's starting to mix in. Mm. I like a fork. I'm sure there's lots of other fancy tools that you could use. But this is sourdough made simple. Yeah, this is the easiest way to make sourdough bread that I know anyways. I'm still very new at doing this. Some finished product examples here. These are mini loaves. Loaves. No loafing around. Alright. I'm going to add the last cup. So six cups total for the flour. And I take the dough from the bottom and I kind of put it over the top. 
fold it in there. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Splendid. Oh, nice fold right there. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Now that it's starting to come together, I'm going to use my hands. First, I'm going to go get some cold water. I'll be right back. The reason why I like doing cold water on my hands before I start mixing is it because it helps the dough not stick as much. And then I can get the rest of that flour that's stuck Mama, on the bottom a little better. Mix it with your hands too. Because well, that's part of bread making. Why? Because you kind of knead it together. Why? Because that's how you mix the flour in with the sourdough starter and the water and the salt. You mix it all together. Why? Why? Because the yeast needs the, the food, which is the flour and the water. And wait, that's what helps it, it grow. Wait, it makes it grow better and better? Mm -hmm. That's, that's what gives you that nice it? texture to that soft, squishy, homemade bread. Mm. <laughs> All right, so that. Remember when we were pretending to make sardo bread with my play -Doh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you did it at that, huh? While I was baking. Yeah, when you were baking some more sardo bread for us. <laughs> All right. So that's. I think that's pretty good. It's still a little. I am gonna wash my hands after that. It's a nice sticky ball, and now I'm gonna put a lid on it and let it sit and ferment. Okay, so it's been about like three hours, and you can tell you can start to see the bubbles, and um, that just lets you know that the starter is starting to eat the, the flour and water so this is going to go in the fridge and then it's going to stay there until we're ready to bake with it okay so it's been over 24 hours we did this on sunday night it is now tuesday morning and this is what it looks like so we're going to cut this in half because remember i said that this was a double batch So I'm going to take out half at a time. I preheated the oven to 475. And it's okay if it's a little uneven, but you want to try to go for about half. And it's kind of sticky and stretchy, but that's a good thing. Okay, so you want a little bit of flour. And you kind of just stretch the dough out a little bit. And you can put it down on the floured surface. Kind of tuck it. And kind of keep doing that until you have a nice ball shape. And I kind of twist it. And then a piece of, a piece of parchment paper.
You're supposed to use a razor to score. I don't have a razor, I just use a knife. So I'm just gonna. Okay, do that and hopefully the air will escape through there. And if not, that's okay. But, and then we're gonna go put this inside the Dutch oven and preheat it uh, with the preheated oven at 475 for 25 minutes. So these are the two types of pans that I use. The Dutch oven, cast iron, you just And then if you want, you can just take two loaf pans. I only have the one cast iron. So I started doing this and it works out pretty nicely. Just use, and you get the same type of um, steam rising effect when you do that. I go into the preheated oven, careful, very hot. I like to put it with the handle facing out so it's easy to grab the handle because after 25 minutes, we're going to take off the lids and cook it for another 25 more minutes. So you take the lid off and now we're going to turn down the oven. Bake to 400 and so we're going to do 25 minutes at 400. So the timer just went off and sometimes I put it in for an extra five minutes but these look nice and golden so I'm going to take them out now. Good. So you don't need any fancy, I know a lot of people when they make sourdough, they measure out, um, they use a scale to weigh their ingredients and they do special foldings and stretching and I don't find any of that necessary. I think you can have a nice loaf of bread without any fancy equipment and without a lot of skill. It's just, you know, a lot of times I'll pray as I make it and yeah, God does the rest, so. The start to a sourdough bread is the starter. And so feeding it is what you do before you start the recipe. I went and washed the jars and put all the starter into a glass jar where I did that. And now I'll distribute it between the, the jars and now we have to feed it. So I do about well, sometimes it doesn't even matter. Up to, as long as you have uh, no more than a half a cup of starter, then you'll do a half a cup of flour. And then you wanna do slightly under that in water. Now, some people measure and they do equal, equal amounts on the scale um, because the water weighs more than the flour, it, you can eyeball it and just do a little bit less than half a cup and it all equals out. And so you want it kind of thick like, um, I always look for a consistency kind of like pancake batter or like um, brownie, brownie batter. And so you want it thick. If it's runny, and this might even be a little too runny. Add a little bit more, just like a real small amount of flour. Yep, see now it's a, a little thicker. So that's about the consistency that I like it to be at. And just scrape it. So I just use a butter knife and a scraper. Spatula, right? Uh, yeah, spatula. <laughs> and then scrape the sides down. And then um, I try to keep the jars clean. So after a couple times of feeding it, I just 
repeat that process with taking it out and washing the jars and then starting it all over. But that's how you feed a starter.